Yo, what's going on? It's Kevin the Tech Ninja here. And just last week, I was in the San Francisco area with the Hummer EV SUV. Big thanks to GMC for having me come out for those two days. They're not sponsoring anything I'm saying. I'm just literally telling you my experience. Now, I'm not a car guy, I'm a tech guy, but these EVs are so full of tech that having a chance to check them out and talk about them is really great for me. So I'm not gonna go into the hardcore car stuff, but I'm gonna talk about the tech stuff and also my true experience driving the car. GMC planned a whole bunch of stuff, but due to weather in, in Napa Valley, uh, we couldn't do a whole lot. There was an obstacle course and a few other activities, but those rained out. But the good news is we had a lot of time to kill, so I had a chance to drive the SUV for roughly five hours in total, albeit in the rain, but I had a chance to just really experience the vehicle in rain and also just driving it without any other input, just my opinions. Okay, so let's talk about design. Very similar to the Hummer truck, it is full-sized and imposing. I mean, it's a Hummer when you look at it. Now, nothing about it screams EV, and that's the point. You know, it's just a Hummer that happens to be EV. And I think that's what GMC is, is doing with their strategy. With all the vehicles they're announcing, these are just huge, huge vehicles and they're the same size as the gas powered vehicles, but now they're EV. This SUV is nearly 16 and a half feet long. It's 7.8 feet wide. And when driving it, it feels wide. It's pretty tall, which I have to step to get in, which I definitely appreciate. And it's very commanding over the road. Now, as far as EV specs, there are estimates out there, but nothing has been confirmed as of yet. Now, some of the higher end models can get up to 300 plus miles worth of range, and the lower end is 250 plus miles worth of range. There are gonna be five different trims with different specs on each one, and you can pause the video here to get a closer look, or you can even use my link down below to check it out. The version that I drove was the EV3X and is retailed for $111,000. The 3X stands for three motors, which equates to some serious speed and acceleration. We're talking crazy numbers up here, 830 horsepower and 11,500 pounds of torque. And I think the only way to access those actual numbers are WTF mode. And yes, there is a mode called WTF, and we'll talk about that later. Now, obviously this is geared for a more high-end buyer at this price, and I always do ask the question, you know, are people who are spending this money, are they gonna put this vehicle on trails? Are they gonna go off-roading? As this SUV has a lot of those modes baked into it, and in the commercials, that's what they're doing. They're climbing rocks, they're accessing all the cameras around the vehicle, under the vehicle, and doing all the things that people would do on a trail, but I have a hard time thinking a vehicle that is $110,000 would be doing that. But if you want to do that, it can do that very well. Didn't have experience in the SUV, the trails were shut down, but in the truck, we took that thing through some crazy obstacles and it was really cool to see. I mean, going to the top of a peak and then literally just sliding down and being in full control was really nice. One thing that EV trucks and the larger ones are starting to do is become a generator. Now this has a built-in power station generator which can jump another electric vehicle and other equipment. Meaning theoretically, your SUV can be used for a tailgate and power up some light equipment by using just the built-in battery. That wasn't something I was able to test, but I would love to test it in person if I have the chance. So GMC, send me the Hummer, I wanna try it out. Now walking around the SUV, there is a lot to love. The headlights is one thing I enjoy looking at. Now on the road, it, it's a very commanding view. It looks great, it looks powerful. And the lights do different effects when charging and when getting near it and locking. So for me, the highlights are definitely the lights. Now, the top also does come off on some trims so you can enjoy a nice breeze or in my case, some nice rain. In iconic Hummer fashion, you have the full size spare on the back. And speaking of the wheels, if you have the off-road package, you get 18 inch wheels and 35 inch OD MT tires. So inside is where you see a lot of tech happening. There's a large 13.4 inch display, same one seen on the Hummer truck, but there's been some updates since I've last seen it as far as smoothness. Now this display, you can get access to your CarPlay and Android Auto, but also GMC software too. 
And here's where you can access all the cameras, battery information, the, the hitch for towing, and, and all that important truck stuff or, or SUV stuff. Now you guys know me, I have a love for CarPlay and Android Auto, so that is what I use majority of the time. Now I do love seeing the tactile buttons for HVAC controls, meaning you can easily turn up and turn down the temperature just by pressing a physical button under the display. The interior is a modern day GMC interior with great feeling leather and clean stitching, full three rolls in the back. Nothing here stands out as far as unique to this vehicle, but it's very premium and it feels like you're in a high-end vehicle from GNC. Very similar to like a Yukon or something like that. So let's talk driving. In my time driving the SUV, it feels large, much larger than what I drive today. And for me, staying in the lanes was pretty tough on these winding California roads that felt very narrow. Um, I didn't notice any lane assist that was automatically kicking in, but there was an option to use Super Cruise, which is their hands-free driving experience. I do have extended experience with Tesla Autopilot and I have used Ford's Blue Cruise before. I found Super Cruise to be great when you're able to activate it. You see the difference about that compared to like Tesla is that it has to have the road map. And so there's pros and cons to that. The pro is if that road is mapped, you're locked in and it's gonna do great staying in the lanes and also passing slower traffic. It will pass in the passing lane and then get back to the travel lane, which is great. Now, the cons is that if it doesn't recognize the road, you just can't use it at all, even if the lines are well-defined. So it's kind of this duality where it's great and very reliable, and then you can't use it. But they have added a ton of roads, so if you're in any sort of main um, interstate, you should be fine. But being honest, there were situations where I was on a main freeway, and then for some reason, it will disengage and then I couldn't turn it back on for like 10, 15 seconds. Um, so obviously there's gonna be some bugs to work out. It didn't put me in a bad situation, but it's not perfect. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that it does have a sensor that watches your eyes, which I think it's a great thing. So you always have to be aware on the road for this to work properly. But I will say the one annoyance about it is if something covers your eyes, say a glass of water, you're going for a drink of water, right? It starts to vibrate your seat telling you to pay attention. And I think if you do this continuously, it may disengage. I'm not 100% sure because it didn't do it with me all the way, but every time I went for a sip of water, it started beeping and vibrating telling me to pay attention, which got annoying pretty quickly. So crab walking is something that everyone asks about. It's an actual mode on the car, so it's not something you can just do while going down the freeway. The crab walk is pretty cool to see and it's used for tight spaces. So if you're in a tight space, and you need to go left or right, and you can't turn, you'll be able to do that. Beyond that, it's fun to use, but personally, I wouldn't have a use for it. But if you are in that situation where you're rock climbing or you need to really navigate, crab walk is a way to do that for you. So WTF mode is Watts to Freedom, which is a launch mode that gives you the full power for the SUV. And sadly, it was raining and we were not allowed to do it. But on the truck, I've done it a few times. Um, you go to WTF mode and then you launch the SUV. Um, the tires screech and it slams you into the back of your seat, which is definitely fun to do and to really experience the full power of this vehicle. All in all, the Hummer is a lot of fun to drive. It's huge, a lot of space. It's a Hummer, but we still need to have a more solidified over the road charging network for long-term success. It does support fast charging at home or your fast chargers that you are starting to see pop up. I definitely am. Without taking it home and seeing how it works for me day to day and where all the chargers are at and, and the actual speeds, it's really hard to say if it'll be great for someone taking a longer road trip. Tesla has a huge advantage, right? There's more chargers out there, but Tesla is opening up the charger networks to non-Tesla vehicles. So that is something that is currently happening. Not all charging stations has that, but that is something down the pipeline. So the future is very bright for EVs and the Hummer SUV was a ton of fun to drive. It is an amazing vehicle, way more vehicle than I would ever need or, or use. But if you're that person in that segment that would want that vehicle or need something that powerful in an SUV format, man, this, uh, this Hummer is very impressive. It's Kevin the Tech Ninja. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you folks later. Peace.